Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone let's start our third lecture as we have discussed in our first two lectures on importance of studying corrosion we have also given some examples some of the catastrophe we have also mentioned and finally as we go ahead and then we have seen that corrosion involves four parts and it also is directly associated with electrochemistry and the four parts are two electrodes which is one is cathode one is anode we have electrolyte where ions will be flowing and then we have conductor where electron will be flowing and then we have a complete circuit and then corrosion will go on. So, uh, corrosion is electrochemical in nature that is what we have understood. And we have also given two examples one is zinc corrosion in dilute acid where on the zinc plate you have hydrogen bubble and this hydrogen bubble is forming due to cathodic reaction which is hydrogen plus ion takes one electron and it converts to hydrogen atom and then finally, two atoms join together and forms hydrogen gas. And that reaction happens on zinc surface itself and this particular electron is coming from formation of ions, formation of ions of zinc which goes into solution from the metal part and that electron will be released into the metal and then metal acts as a as a as a conductor and that electron comes to the place where hydrogen evolution reaction happens. So, that way the complete circuit is the circuit is complete and this zinc actually finally forms zinc chloride because already you have chloride in that particular HCl medium and that way zinc corrosion goes on. We have also given example of iron corrosion in atmosphere and if I go back and try to see that particular uh, slide, if you see that iron is actually going to iron plus 2 ion electrons are released and these electrons are taken by cathodic reaction which is oxygen plus 2 H 2 O plus 4 E equal to 4 O H minus. And here we have seen that this particular ion reacts with this H 2 O plus O 2 and goes to F E O H hole 2. In fact, this particular reaction is anodic reaction. and this particular reaction is cathodic reaction which happens on the iron surface itself. Now, this iron plus 2 reacts with OH minus and forms FeOH hole 2 which is same as this reaction. Finally, this reaction is parallelly taking place this is also electrochemical because this is anodic reaction, this is cathodic reaction, this anodic reaction happens on the iron surface iron corrodes and cathodic reaction also happens on the iron surface which takes care of that electrons which are released by iron while formation of ions. This is also electrochemistry. Now, we will get to the thermodynamics of these reactions as well as how we can explain this formation of ions at different levels of pH and 
we would basically consider aqueous corrosion. Now, since I have mentioned aqueous corrosion, this corrosion can be divided into two parts one is wet corrosion and another one is dry corrosion. Now, you must be wondering what is dry corrosion. If we recall that we have mentioned that oxidation is also a corrosion process. Now, whenever we talk about corrosion process, we have to take we have to see that whether this four parts of electrode that particular cell corrosion cell is are being satisfied. Now, let us get to as we have mentioned that corrosion can be wet and dry. wet and dry corrosion. Now, in the wet corrosion we see that where H 2 O is involved. We also call it aqueous corrosion. And in case of dry corrosion we are mentioning that oxidation. oxidation of metal we are mentioning that this is also a corrosion that means it is also electrochemical. Aqueous corrosion from those two examples it is very clear it involves oxygen it involves water because in one case we are dipping zinc metal into dilute HCl solution which is aqueous solution of HCl and in second case we are seeing that corrosion of iron object in the environment in the atmosphere where we have moisture which is again water of course, there oxygen is also involved. But in case of dry corrosion let us just have a look at what happens at the interface of metal when oxygen is involved because anyhow I am talking about oxidation of metal if we consider this particular reaction. O2 equal to half O2 MO. If I consider this oxidation reaction, let us have a look at what happens at the interface. This is metal surface, let us say some oxide has formed MO and then this is gas medium. Now, in the beginning there was if we consider that there was nothing. So, metal surface we are having m going to taking leaving 2 electron and then forming m plus 2. And if we consider oxygen half oxygen that means, one oxygen atom it takes care 2 electron and forming O 2 minus since we are having this this notation 2 plus and 2 minus and if they combine you see m plus half O 2 equal to m plus 2 O sorry m 2 minus two plus 2 minus. This is nothing but MO which is same as this reaction. Now, interesting let us look at carefully this what is this reaction? This reaction is nothing but anodic reaction. Because it the metal atom is leaving two electrons, it is basically the oxidation is taking place in the sense that if we consider oxi oxidation to be electron when metal leaves electron, we call it oxidation. Now, if I consider this reaction, this reaction is nothing but a reduction reaction. Reduction or cathodic reaction and this is oxidation reaction. Now, question is two reactions are done. 
Now, since in the beginning we have only metal surface, we have oxygen and then metal. So, if this place we have metal plus 2 formation, so 2 electrons are released here in the metal. So, these 2 electrons are flowing through that conductor and here half oxygen takes care 2 electron and forming O2 minus. Two minus. This is two minus. So these two are reacting. Now you see this part acts as anode. So one electrode. This part act as cathode. Second electrode. This is conductor. And here, when these two reactions are. This two reaction, this half cell reaction, these are called half cell reactions. These half cell reactions are taking place. Finally, metal 2 plus and oxygen 2 minus, they are combining and forming metal oxide. So, this metal oxide is forming on top of this metal surface. So, now we have situation like this. So, here metal surface metal oxide and oxygen. Now, once we have this, now question is whether this reaction would continue or not. Now, still if I consider metal ion is forming, so two electrons are here and these electron can go somewhere around this metal object because every metal part is basically acting as conductor. And now this electron can flow through this because metal oxide either it could be n type or p type. If it is n type then this electron can flow through this through the electron carrier and then here can form 2 minus. Now, this ion can also move like this. Now, when it moves like this, it comes here and then combine with this and form metal oxide. Now, if metal ion is moving on the outer side and there this particular thing can combine and form metal oxide. Now, interestingly charge flow is taking place through this for example, here oxygen 2 minus is flowing or here metal 2 minus is flowing through this. So, charge flow is taking through this MO. So, now MO becomes my electrolyte. And in case where oxygen ion goes through the metal oxide and reaches to the metal surface and at the interface of metal and metal oxide, oxide forms further oxide molecules are forming. That case the oxide growth is taking place on the metal metal oxide surface. So, on this surface met oxide growth is taking place. Now, in case metal ion is moving out from the metal metal oxide interface and coming to the metal oxide oxygen interface and there it combines with the oxygen ion, then the oxide growth is taking place on the surface of or the, at the interface of metal oxide and gaseous oxygen. So, here also you are seeing that the condition of corrosion cell is satisfying. That means, we have cathode, we have anode and in this case since this cathodic reaction is taking place at this surface, at this interface this becomes my cathode and this particular reaction is taking place at metal metal oxide interface this becomes my anode. 
and electron flow is taking place through the metal surface or it can flow through the metal oxide. So, metal oxide itself is acting as electrode uh, acting as a conductor as well as electrolyte because it also allows charge flow in the form of metal ion or oxygen ion. So, this is also electrochemical reactions and here metal is oxidizing. So, metal is losing in the form of oxide this is also corrosion. So, but here we do not have moisture. So, that means it is a dry corrosion. So, that that is what we have come to the condition of dry corrosion where we have oxidation. If we have time then we would definitely look into oxidation of metal little little uh, uh, in little depth, but our primary interest would be on this aqueous corrosion. Primary interest. So, we will concentrate more on this in our present set of lectures. Now, before we go detail analysis that means, when I talk about analysis we talk about thermodynamics and kinetics of this electrochemical reactions either metal ion formation or cathodic reactions where uh, electron is being accepted by some species. It can be iron, it can be uh, metal again another metal or it can be another uh, um, it can be oxygen. So, all those cases we would try to see their thermodynamics and kinetics. So, uh, but for the time being we would again go back and try to see some of the uh, forms of corrosion. So, next topic is forms of corrosion. For understanding this forms of corrosion, I think mere observation as well as a little bit of the idea of what we have already learned from this uh, two and half lectures you can say. Uh, that means, that there would be electrochemical reaction one is cathode one is anode one would be anodic reaction one would be cathodic reactions. On that basis we would be able to understand some of the forms. Forms means the kind of appearance I would say. So, let us look at some of the appearances okay. and then accordingly we would define the forms of corrosion. Now, when we come to the forms of corrosion if we have a kind of observation rather care careful observation one form is uniform corrosion. Second form galvanic corrosion. Third crevice fourth pitting fifth de alloying we also call it uh, in case of uh, uh, de alloying or uh, in case of iron brass let us say we call it de zincification like that, then we have intergranular seventh erosion corrosion, where we have two special forms. Uh, I would say two special forms, one is fretting another one is cavitation and finally, we have stress assisted corrosion where we have three segments one is 
stress corrosion, then corrosion fatigue, and another one is hydrogen embrittlement. And in case of hydrogen embrittlement, we have few other forms. For example, hydrogen blistering is one form. And this particular definition of this definitions of different forms uh, are basically arriving from the appearance. Like let us uh, when for, for example, if we consider uniform corrosion as we uh, mean by uniform means it is homogeneous uniformly happening. Like one example let me put up, uh, if we see uh, iron made sheet cover over a roof, one can find that after some time uh, you will have a red rust formation over the entire surface. And if it is carefully looked at um, at a little uh, uh, carefully looked at at the interface, you would see that at different sections we would have almost about similar uh, depth of attack. I would say depth of attack means the corrosion is gradually progressing towards the depth direction of the metal surface. So, at every sections we would have almost about similar uh, depth of attack. So, that time we call it uniform corrosion. So, it is a form, it is it is a appear, it is basically appearance of that particular mode. Now, for example, pitting corrosion, when we talk about pitting corrosion, we know this particular name pitting. For example, on a surface, as if from the appearance you would see that there is no problem because it is as shiny as it was obtained in the as received condition when it was obtained first. But the pitting can be extremely localized and again if we carefully look at and analyze, we would see that at some positions the depth of attack is extremely localized and it has gone very far towards the depth direction of that metal surface, but rest of the surface looks absolutely fine. Similarly, crevice this is also appearance for example, let us say crevice means wherever we have a small opening in the metal structures or metal bodies and in that small opening that opening should be enough so that it can allow solution to go in, but the solution would remain stagnant into that particular metal opening. So, that case that would create a kind of corrosion, localized corrosion rest of the surface would look of a shiny, but in that localized portion you will have red rust in case of iron I would if I consider iron surface. Again appearance, now de alloying interestingly if we uh, have a brass 70 30, 70 percent copper and 30 percent zinc. And that brass if you dip it in HCl dilute HCl solution, after some time we would see that the color generally in the beginning the color of the brass is little golden yellow. And then when you expose it to the into the acid after some time you would see the surface is becoming a bit a red colored. And if we analyze it that for example, the analysis tool is for example, uh, uh, ACM EDS if we do then we would see that the copper content has gone up from 70 percent to even close to around 92, 93 percent. So, now at the surface that means copper is enriching and if we look at that copper surface uh, in, under the microscope, you would see that the copper surface is porous in nature. So, now here zinc where is then zinc because in the beginning it was 7, 30 percent zinc. So, now zinc content has gone down to 1 or 2 percent in that particular copper enriched region. So, the zinc has gone out into the solution and copper has been left out and that forms a particular uh, mode of corrosion which is called de alloying. Since zinc is going out that is what we call it de zincification. So, like that, so those are basically appearance. Now, if we try to analyze some of those uh, all those of those uh, variations, then we would also see some interesting part that all those variations we will see that they are decided by some factors. Generally, if we see those factors, we will categorize into 
uh, uh, five major sections. One is materials definitely, material and when I talk about material that means, if I consider these particular forms on a particular material, then material composition is fixed. So, that time we talk about microstructures. that time we talk about microstructure, since we are fixing the composition. Now, then we have environment, this environment is a very big thing and uh, in nutshell we can say that when we talk about aqueous corrosion environment, the influence could be from oxygen, from moisture content, from SO2 content or there could be possibility of presence of some metal ions. For example, Fe 3 plus ion if somewhere it is there, this Fe 3 plus is not good because Fe 3 plus allows a greater corrosion to happen in case of. For example, in we have given this example zinc dipped in dilute HCl. If we have little bit of impurity Fe F Cl 3 that means, Fe plus 3 ion is there. So, the corrosion rate of zinc could be much higher than in the solution where Fe Cl 3 is not there. So, this metal ions. Then of course, the other factors like temperature those factors will come into picture. Then we have of course, stress. Stress is important when we talk about stress assisted corrosion. One particular example we have put forth that is uh, silver breeze, uh, crumbling of silver breeze that people said that the reason behind that crumbling of silver breeze was uh, stress corrosion and corrosion fatigue. Then we have this is 1, this is 2, 3, then of course, we have design. Design factor makes a huge impact. For example, if a smooth surface and rough surface, smooth surface of course, it will have less corrosion effect than the rough surface in general. Finally, fifth is the time. Of course, if something is exposed for longer duration of course, there will be corrosion would be more. So, these five major factors are crucial. So, in my next lecture, I would talk about this eight forms of corrosion in nutshell, we will not go greater depth into it into this particular corrosion mode, because that is not our purpose. Our purpose is to understand the fundamentals of corrosion and then of course, on the way we will see that the effect of these five factors. Let us stop, we will continue in our next lecture. Thank you.